Okay, let's continue. So I, I was talking about um, local memory allocation. So I want to show you how um, that can be done. Um, so in this case, uh, actually I'm showing you the um, code in the example that we're going to talk about. So we have my kernel.cl, which has the um, kernel function, and the name of the kernel function is string search. And we have several arguments to this kernel function. Um, character 16, this is something we're going to talk about uh, next. But this underscore underscore local int, uh, this uh, heuristic, uh, and local result. This is a, um, this is going to point to a local memory object uh, because this qualifier local and it's going to point into a integer. Um, you, you can expect there will be a number of integers, an integer array uh, pointed by this local result. Uh, and then in the um, kernel function, you can use these uh, integers using this indices 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, you don't see a, a malloc or a, a calloc that any kind of dynamic memory allocation in the kernel function because you know, it does not support dynamic allocation in the kernel function. And the way to really allocate that is to use this set kernel argument API in the host. So in the main.c, you know, host program, when you um, initialize these kernel arguments, you actually use uh, this uh, method to indicate that I want to allocate certain size of local memory space. In this case, because this is the third, uh, the fourth argument, it's one, two, three, four. This is the fourth argument uh, of this um, kernel function, and the index to that argument is number three. So this is, in fact, the uh, local result. In the size, we actually use this, the expected size for this local memory as the size. So we have it here four times size of int. So that is to say we want to allocate a local memory that is uh, four integer size. So this is when, when, one way to allocate that. This is uh, typically, um, you, you can see in a lot of examples, and it, this way of initializing local memory is for OpenCL specification 1.0 and earlier. And last night time I checked, in later specifications, actually OpenCL uh, specifications relax this um, requirement a little bit. You can actually use uh, qualifier local or well, underscore underscore local when you declare a variable or array inside a kernel. So you could do a underscore underscore local space integer and local result um, bracket four, like you do in a typical C program. Um, now, which way to use? I would say it's, it's up to you, uh, but if you use um, this example here, I will follow this example here. Uh, you have, you know, uh, the code that can be um, supported on many different platforms because you know different platforms may have different uh, compliance to newer OpenCL specifications. So this is just a side note that uh, there are other alternatives you can allocate this local memory. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is the vector data type. And we actually saw here already this uh, character 16. This is not a C uh, a data type in C or other programming languages. Uh, this is actually specific to OpenCL kernels. Um, you can have array containing multiple elements of the same type. Uh, and this is used in many different cases, like in our example, we'll see later. And these arrays, of course, they have a fixed length. And you typically expect there's some operations you want to apply on every element at the same time. And if you use this vector t data type, it's faster and easier uh, than using the arrays. So here's a comparison. Uh, if you declare 
uh, let's say, um, four, uh, three arrays, and each of them has four elements. So A, B, and C. So in the style of C or other high-level languages, you would probably like to, uh, to do this if you want to do an uh, element-wise um, addition. We're adding these two vectors and put the result into a third vector. So you can uh, have a loop uh, I iterates from zero to four, and then you uh, add these elements uh, one by one, put the result into the resulting vector. But with this vector data type in OpenCL kernel function, you can make a very simple uh, two line of code to do the same thing. You declare float for a comma b comma c. So that is to say, you, we're going to have three vectors. Each of these three vectors is a vector of four elements, and the element size is float, floating point. And if you have these three vectors, you can simply perform a plus b and assign the result to c. Because they are uh, vectors, so the addition operation is actually applied to every single element in the vector. So the element-wise um, arithmetic operation. So with these two lines, um, you can perform the same thing as you have to do in the last uh, four lines. If you use this vector data type, then you need to, um, in some cases, initialize them. Uh, the way to initialize them is to, um, you can have uh, these values listed there explicitly. So for this data vector, you can say, uh, I want to initialize the four elements as 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, .0, and 1.0. Um, or you can just say uh, 1.0 because all these uh, values are the same. So that will automatically uh, repeat this, this single value in all the elements in this vector. Um, you can have uh, vectors of vectors. Um, so you, you, you're not limited to uh, scalar values. You can initialize a vector using smaller vectors, uh, like this vector C, uh, which is initialized using two vectors, A and B, uh, each of which is a two-element vector. So as a result, after this line, uh, you can expect um, this vector C has value 1.0, 1.0, 2.0, Finally, you can create a vector with a combination of scalars and smaller vectors. Uh, let's say you have a, a three uh, element vector RGB uh, with three floating point values, and you can expand that to a four element uh, vector float type uh, by using RGB and additional one scalar value. By the way, I have not updated the PDF on Blackboard, uh, but I will do that once I uh, finish the uh, lecture today. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is actually a little bit um, um, interesting uh, because this is, uh, I think, one of the benefits of having this vector type, um, and how how compact uh, in in a compact way we can access the elements in the vectors. Let's say that we have example. We have a character sixteen um, message. So this is a vector with sixteen characters, sixteen letters, or sixteen bytes. What I have here is I initialized the elements in this um, vector as uh, hello uh, programmer explanation mark. So I have these 16 <coughs> letters um, initialized in this um, vector 16, character vector 16. The way we access the, these elements, you can use um, you can use these uh, 
uh, individual in indices, uh, index to this element, and proceeding with the letter S. So in this line, this example, um, we have a character eight. So this E, you can expect, is uh, another vector, but its size is eight. The way we initialize this E is to use the first eight letters from the message vector. This S, you know, uh, preceding the indices to the elements in the um, original vector. So what we're looking at um, index zero, which is start from the first one, H, then index one, and two, all the way to seven. So we're getting the first eight letters from the uh, 16, uh, line 16 vector MSG. So that is to set this hello pro to the variable E. And we can also use the same way to access other elements and then a different order. So this order can be you know, um, arbitrary. So you can have 5, 4, 3, 1 if you basically reverse the first um, the, the um, characters from here to here. Essentially, we're going to um, reverse the, the original vector and assign that to H. And we can do that different ways. We can pick you know, any other um, letters, uh, elements, and then um, go to a different um, vector. Also, we can assign values to these um, different portions of these vectors. We can assign a new letter to this um, element at uh, index 5. We can assign new uh, values to other parts of the uh, vectors. So here are some other examples. OK, so I basically you know, get a lot of preparation done before I want to talk to you about this kernel function, the same limitation. I hope you can see, it's not very clear, I apologize about the font size. But right now we basically have all the things we need to build this kernel function, which does the um, string search, or um, string pattern search. So this kernel function takes a few arguments. Character 16 is the pattern. Um, the reason we have this pattern 16 uh, as a 16, um, element vector is that we have four keywords that and then with and from have so we have these four uh, keywords and each of them happen to be uh, four letter word so altogether you have 16 letters that you want to compare with and the second argument is the input text so that's a text that we store in the global memory and it points to the beginning point of that text. This text could be um, with some length, and we will specify how many bytes that input text uh, this one item needs to work on. And then we have this character per item, which you know, tell us what's the size uh, of that text we need to search. And then we have this local result. That's the um, pointer to the local memory where we initialized uh, from the host memory. And finally, the global, um, this global result stores the final counting result for those four keywords. Okay, let's start this kernel function. First, we declare two character 16. So we, we have another 
two uh, 16 element vectors, text vector and check vector. And then we initialize the um, counters that we use for doing the local reduction. So these are the local results, 0, 1, 2, and 3. This is what we allocated for local memory. And this 0, 1, 2, 3 corresponding to the keywords that we want to identify, we want to search for. And we initialize them to all zeros. Now, note here that after the initialization, we have a barrier operation. Uh, and the argument is that uh, CLK local memory fence. So this is to use the local memory fence as a, kind of a synchronization point. This is to make sure that even though you may have a number of work items within this work group, but they all have to wait until all the work items finish the uh, memory operations. So all these work items will try to initialize the counters to be zeros, which are fine if they're all running to zeros. But we want to make sure that no one can um, run forward until this initialization is done. So if all the work items in this group all finish up this memory operation, so that they all reach to this barrier point, and then they will know that that's, that's the moment they can all proceed to the next instruction, next uh, program, um, I mean instruction. And they will do that. They will proceed to execute the next statement, which is to get global ID times character per item. Now this is interesting. Uh, this character's per item, think about that if let's say we have um, 1600, um, that's 1600 letters in, in the document. Oh, that's the total number of letters in the document that I want to search for the keywords. And I have 16 work items. And how many letters, I mean, I, how, how big is the piece for each work item? It's going to be 1600 divided by 16. Right, so this characters per item will be a hundred. So for every single work item, it'll be responsible for 100 letters from the original document. But because we want each of them to work on different pieces, so we need to get the proper starting point within the original text. That is why we use the global ID multiplied with this character per item to figure out Okay, out of this 1,600 letters, where should I start to count another 100? And those 100 letters will be the pieces assigned to me. You follow? Um, let's see, let me try again. Let's say we have 100, uh, uh, 1,600 letters, okay? And that's the total number of letters in the original document. And let's assume that total we have 16 work items. Okay, these work items could be in two groups, four groups, depends on how big is the group. But you know, total, let's say we have 16 work items. Then how many letters I should assign to a work item? That'll be 1600 divided by 16. So each work item will be working on 100 letters out of the original text. But we expect that these 100 letters will be would be from different pieces of the original text. So you basically look at the 1600 letters. Um, so the first 100 will be assigned to a work item zero, and the next 100 will be assigned to work item one, and the next one, and so on. So by using this global ID, which gives me the, my identifier, so from zero to 15, because we have 16 of them, so my ID will be from zero to 15. And then I times the characters per item. In our case, that's 100. So that will give me the starting point of my 100 letters assigned to me. Right. So you can draw on the paper to get that. Um, so that's the offset I should start with. So now I have this. Oops. 
let's say we have this is 1600 characters and I have 16 work items so this one will be um, 0 to 99 from 100 to 199 200 you know, 299 and so on and finally we have I think this is uh, so this, each, each chunk, this is the original text. Then I need to search keyword in. And this is going to be assigned to work item zero. And this will be work item one. And so on. Right, so I have 100 characters in this, or um, from this original text that I need to work on. So for work item I, this work item I, so I, I'll get this starting point, that is this item offset, and from that point on, I need to um, This is a plus sign, you can't see it. I need to count for another 100 characters. Okay, so I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna try to move my window to look at to search for the keywords. to this for loop here. I will do one thing before I do the comparison. So I'm going to load um, this text this text is the, um, the text in the global memory. Using this I that is this using this I which points to the window of characters I need to look at I will load 16 characters so I'm gonna load from this current pointer First of all, this is the chunk that assigned to me. I'm going to move the 16 character window. I'm going to load this 16 characters into this text vector. So I have text vector. So I have 16, uh, 16 letter um, text, text vector loaded from the original text. This is the original text. This is in a global memory. So we're going to load this to here. And note this is in private memory. I use another vector called a check vector and this check vector is going to be assigned with some values and the value <coughs> is determined by the comparison of this text vector with the pattern. 
So what we are actually doing here is this is pattern, which consists of the keywords I want to compare with. So I have that. a comparison on these two vectors and assign the value to this check vector. I can um, this way. The value is going to be assigned to check vector, which is also a uh, 16 letter or 16 element vector. Now here's what we're going to have to have. When we have this comparison operation, and because these two are vectors, we actually compare every element out of this, these two vectors. If in your original text, you indeed have this keyword, that, then the comparison will generate FF, 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 FF. If this element is equal to this element, this element is equal to that, this element. Now, if this is something else, let's say A, B, C, B, okay. or even, let's say, if this is A, B, C, H, because A is not the same as W, so this will be a zero, this will be a zero, this will be a zero, and this one, because H is equal to H, so you have FF. So in order to identify if there's a keyword, we have to make sure that for these first four elements in the check vector, this is the result, this is the comparison result. If we find out the most significant bit of these four elements, all ones, that's indication we have all Fs uh, here, and that's indication of this these four letters matches the, with the keyword. The second one, as you can see in this example, even though H is the same, but this is not the same as this keyword. So even though you have this FF here, but these other three locations you all have zeros. So that, that's the comparison result you would expect. So back in the program, what we're checking the first if here is that we're going to check this check vector dot s zero one two three. Sorry, it's kind of tiny on the projector here. But we're checking the first element of this check vector. All is a built-in function. We're building API uh, for the kernel. This will be true if all the, uh, if the significant bit of all the elements is one. So, for this particular case, this, if this condition holds, because that we have all Fs, FF, in check vector. So this is a true, that means we indeed find a keyword, so we'll increment local result. And local result is where we store the first column. 
he implies the first element is not in local zone array. So we increment. And know that we use atomic increment because we want to make sure that this is an operation that cannot be interrupted. That would prevent any um, collisions uh, from these multiple um, from the um, multiple work items trying to increment this value. Similarly, we're going to check with the second keyword, where the in indices of the keyword is from here. This, this is a four, five, uh, this four, five, six, seven. So we have another four letters or four results we want to check. Now, even though H H is the same, but the other three letters are different, so we end up having zero, zero, zero F F. So this check all check vector S4567, this is going to be false because only one uh, uh, has the significant bit as a one. So this will be false. So this will not be uh, incremented. Same thing, you know, depends on the value. You may or may not increment the counters. Okay, so by this time we check with all the keywords, determine if there's a match. If there is, we we didn't actually produce a key value pair. Instead, we directly increment uh, the counter in this local group. Now, here we have another um, barrier. This barrier, the argument is global memory fence. Uh, this is to try to use the uh, global memory to uh, make sure that all the operations that are attempting to assess the uh, global memory will have all the uh, work items completed. So with that barrier, you can uh, make sure that before we move on to the next uh, phase, all the work items are uh, you know, done with checking all the input letters. By the way, this for loop, so after this checking, okay, this for loop will move the window to the right for one position, so we have a chance to check another um, 16 letters in the original text. And we do that for um, this character per item this many times. After that, we will pick one work item in this group. Note here, I'm doing this get local ID. If I have four work items in this group, my ID will be from zero, one, two, and three. So I'm picking one of them. I just happen to choose you know, local ID zero. At the same time, the work item zero in another group is doing the same thing. We may have other work groups. So each work group will have ID, uh, will have a work item that has this local ID zero. So there are other work items doing the same thing. Um, that is to uh, add the local result the counters in local result to the global result. And we use atomic add to make sure that there's no collision. And we do that for other counters. So this here is uh, what we uh, are doing for the um, visit, getting the result from each work group to uh, the uh, global result. And And finally, we perform the very last one. Um, Somewhere this is duplicated. Um, I have to fix this. This is the same. 
from time of induction. And you double check. Um, uh, there might be some error with the uh, pasting is program segment, but you know essentially that's what we have for, from um, reading, initializing the counters in local memory. Then we go through every. Uh, we will find out where is our starting point for the letters assigned to this work item, then we move the pointer and use this vector operation to compare with the patterns, with the keywords, and to determine if there's a match. If there's a match, we enter the counter. And then we'll perform the uh, reduction. All right, so I'm gonna go quickly to the actual program. Um, this is, in fact, <coughs> one of the exercises on the GitHub repository. Uh, if you have a uh, repository on your machine or on um, Intel Dev Cloud, you can uh, see the same thing. And we can see what we have uh, in the kernel function. Um, so, let me go back a little bit. So, this is the same thing that we explained. We have um, two uh, vectors de declared and we initialize the local memory to uh, reset the counters. And then we use the global ID to calculate the offset. And use the offset, we will load uh, 16 bytes at a time to this text vector. And then every loop reiteration will move the location by one. And then we compare, and then we check the comparison result using these um, all uh, check factor. This is uh, kind of a nice built-in function in the kernels to be able to check um, multiple elements at the same time. And then we will perform the, the global reduction using um, the first work item in each group. Okay. Uh, main function, I just want to show you quickly the pattern. So this is where we define a pattern. So this is where you put in the actual keywords you want to search. And this just happened that we have four keywords and each of them uh, is four letter long. So we have 16 uh, bytes here to search. And then we have the, um, we said, uh, we, of course, we need to put in the original text in the global memory. It's all these sort of things you, you do, initialize the buffers. And in the kernel, before we call, we set up the arguments, patterns, uh, text vector, uh, text buffer, this character per item, which I think uh, I chose as uh, this way to basically decide. Um, this is the total length of the original text. And global size is the total number of work items. So I divide that, and plus one is just make sure that it's an uh, integer. Um, that uh, we need to accommodate if this is uh, the very last piece of the um, fragments. And I already talked about how we initialize local memory. And so we start the. Um, the kernel. And for this particular case, I use, let me check the size of, um, in the range kernel, yeah, global size, let me see. So we determine the global size, depends on um, the um, the actual available resources. Um, and then we start the kernel.
Yeah, so uh, in this example, uh, we give a uh, text, uh, Kafka the text is, has a lot of words in it, and then we try to count the number of occurrence of these four keywords. And so I encourage you to take a look at this source code and, and try to run it um, when you have time.